Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you're listening. In this episode, I am chatting LinkedIn. It celebrated its 18th birthday this summer and will likely pass the 1 billion users mark by the time it gets to 20 years old. It can rightly claim the title of biggest professional network on the planet. So what's it like working at LinkedIn? I chat with Laura Fox, a former employee who joined in the early days for the business in the UK. I get an inside view of working at LinkedIn and we talk about how the platform is so much more than the recruiter license is often known for. Please do subscribe and share the pod with your network. Your support really does mean a lot. Let's get on with the chat. Good morning, Laura. How are you doing? Really well, thanks, Chris. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for grabbing the time with us. It's um, so it's really good to have you have you with us today. Um, so let's let's start off with just a bit of a an introduction. I mean, we've known each other, we've worked with each other quite a long time ago. But it'd be good to um, yeah introduce yourself to to the listeners and tell us a bit about what what you what you do. Yeah, sure. So um, as you just said, we we knew each other. Gosh. 15 years ago when I worked in in an agency at the same time as you um so I spent 11 years working in recruitment marketing agencies uh in London and then had the phenomenal life-changing experience to join the LinkedIn team when we were opening the office in London so there was only a handful of people there when I joined I mean I, I remember going for my interview which was a, above a dirty shop on Oxford Street um, <laughs> I mean we hadn't even moved into premises yet they were still being kitted out wow. um, and it was it was truly amazing and um, ended up being with LinkedIn for about seven years so it was like I say it was most definitely the best career move I could ever have made in my life mm. um, and then I left there in 2018 and set up well actually I left to go on a wild and crazy adventure with my family before my little boy started primary school and we went mm. and uh, traveled around Asia but during that time um, I set up my own business which I've now been running for about 18 months um, as a LinkedIn consultant because it's my passion it's what I love I love talking to clients about it. I love helping people leverage it. So I am mad about LinkedIn in every possible way. Yeah, good stuff. And um, so you were literally like, probably like employee number three, four, five, six or seven or eight. You know, you were literally there at the beginning when it comes to. It was early UK. doors. Yeah, there yeah. was definitely people there before me. But, um, <laughs> I was the first person hired in um our new what was becoming a what they call a solutions team so mm. we had um a couple of sales guys and we had you know back office people and um what they wanted to do was at the time we were only selling one product which i'm sure we'll talk about later because you and i have had a good debate about this already about recruiter mm. licenses but the opportunity was 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 much broader than that and they wanted someone to come in to educate both the internal team that were going out selling to clients across Europe. So there was a few people in Dublin, a few people in in, in Amsterdam, a few people in mm-hmm. Paris to educate them around um, employer branding and the opportunity digitally on the platform for brands to engage um, and also to work with them and their clients externally. So that's what I was brought in to do. And uh, it was tremendous. And so, you know, it was very, it, we were very much building the plane while we were flying. I think we had, I think we had a company pages back then, but that was it. Mm. There was no advertising. There were no different advertising formats. Um, it was really, really in its early inception, but we saw the opportunity. I think we were making, you know, double digits in terms of advertising revenue for the talent business at that mm. time. Um, okay. you know, by the time I left, it was multiple millions and into the billions you know Mm. so to speak so yeah it was um it was definitely early early days for sure it was quite an exciting time as well i like what you're saying about um about uh, building the plane while you were you know (laughs) while you were flying so reed hoffman talks about that doesn't he i'm sure that's that's a great i imagine that was very much part of the philosophy of of reading and the way you did business yeah, I mean, Reed, Reed is the business. Reed was the business. Mm. Reed's DNA runs through the business even today and even beyond. You know, I still listen 
to everything that Reed has to say. I love his Masters of Scale podcast. I love yeah, his, yeah. I've just he's recently I've never even seen this feature on LinkedIn until this week. He's just launched a newsletter which you can subscribe to on LinkedIn. Yeah. And his first article was all about investing in a COVID world, which is really interesting. You know, the, the man is a genius when it comes to um, networking. Um, and his brain works in, you know, in such a unique way that, um, yeah, you'll probably hear me say things that have probably come out of Reed's mouth. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's, it's good stuff. Definitely. It's, um, yeah. And I, I think, I think looking at, so I've you know, known LinkedIn for, well, for a, many many years and probably since the time you joined them actually but if not before but from the very early days myself and I, I've had the chance to you know speak to you know many people from LinkedIn and know people who now I used to work with who work there as well and um and yeah it sounds like I mean the for me the the whole kind of the vision of this creating economic opportunity for everybody in the work, global workforce and and the mission of kind of connecting the world's professionals I think is is a fantastic focus you know and purpose for, for an organization and when it comes to kind of employer marketing um and kind of talent solutions what is it that linkedin was kind of so passionate about what was it that you know made you guys so eager to to get in front of clients well i think i think you said it there actually you know our our drive to create economic opportunity for everybody for everyone in the global workforce was real for us and it is real for them um what's so beautiful about a platform like linkedin and what personally has got me engaged for so many years and continues to get me excited about it is it's a level playing field mm. everybody has the same opportunity and the same access to people to skills to jobs to knowledge no matter whether you're the CEO of a company or whether you're starting out in your career, you know, everybody has the same access. And, and I found that, you know, in, incredibly empowering. Um, and it, you know, the one thing that's always attracted me to working into the rec recruitment marketing space, which is why I've stayed kind of, you know, in and around this area for my entire 20 year career is I love the fact that you're helping people find their dream job. Yeah, no, matter which, no matter which way around you do it, um, no matter how kind of where you fit into that kind of ecosystem, I love the fact that, you know, what LinkedIn can do is actually help make real difference to people. Mm. And and that's what's always attracted me to the platform. And, it, you know, whether you're hiring, whether you're helping a company hire in, you know, graduates, apprentices, nurses, doctors, or, you know, experienced engineers, you're, you're making a real impact, which is why I think very early in my career, I never went down the road of doing product marketing so much. I really enjoyed employer marketing because I did a year as a recruitment consultant fresh out of university many moons ago. Mm. And it was something like that, something about that just didn't sit with me very well. I just... Mm. I, the recruitment, act, the actual staffing side, but actually helping empower companies to do it themselves was, um, you know, the creativity that goes into that and how LinkedIn mm. can translate that on the platform through, you know, lots of really cool creative ways is just what was always really, really exciting for me. And it was a, it was a great opportunity. And that's why I think LinkedIn is so uniquely placed to do it because there's just nothing else out there. You know, the whole thing about, you know, why LinkedIn was so disruptive, I think, in the early days with the recruiter licenses, which is what people sometimes harp back to, is that it gave employers the ability to find people across the entire workforce. So, you mm. know, it was the whole thing around passive versus active job seekers. You know, no longer was it, you know, just the reserve of staffing companies to try and find people, but mm. employers could look across almost everyone that works that has a LinkedIn profile, which is, you know, almost the entire working population, if you're thinking about the UK, um, and and present their opportunities. And if you were, you know, if you had just one kind of foot in the, in the market to think what else might be out there, or you might be kind of semi-passive and thinking, you know, what else could, could I do? You know, if an opportunity was presented to you in the right way at the right time, you had a warm feeling about that brand, then maybe you might be open to it. And that was incredibly mm. um, exciting for companies that don't just have to look at the 20 percent or so active job seekers who are looking for jobs and 
signed up with recruitment consultants. They could they could talk to everyone. Mm. And I think that was the big game changer. That was yeah, the big game yeah. changer. I think, um, I mean, and now we're looking at you know, LinkedIn on a trajectory to hit 1 billion users, active users, probably, probably at some point this time next year maybe you know there's always nearly yeah. 700 million users um and that is you know that is very much showing that you know it's companies achieving what it wants to do in terms of you know supporting the global workforce um and you know i've often kind of found that you know it, when you look at linkedin it particularly i th i think now it's becoming the platform that I think it's always wanted to be, it was always should have been, where it is, there's so much more conversation going on now on LinkedIn. Um, and it's so much more about, you know, about your career. It's about people sharing really useful insights and and opinions. And uh, just I've just noticed over the last, say, three years that it's, it's changed quite a lot in terms of the type of content that's being shared. Um, and what's your, yeah. what's, your, what's your view on that? Yeah, I'd agree completely. I mean, I remember in the early days, I'd go out to see clients and I'd say that, you know, I think that LinkedIn is going to be the, you know, the biggest publisher of professional content on the web. Mm. And, you know, within about three, three years, it was, and it is, it is the biggest publisher of professional content on the web. Mm. There is nowhere else that you can find that amount of relevant business related content and you know I think the change that you might have seen is that it's probably been in the last three to five years that LinkedIn is now invested in editorial teams and it's got a really you know we used to have one person in London who used to work in editorial mm -hmm. now they've got large teams who are curating and creating content mm -hmm. um, and so as an end user you're experiencing the benefit of that through you know really fantastic quality insights mm. um and I, absolutely i agree I and mean, in linkedin i remember being you know pre-linkedin back in the agency days you know just earlier in my career you know you go to work um you'd spend the first five minutes of the day with your cup of tea sat in your front of your computer and i'd look at all the different kind of trade press online you know i'd look at what was happening you know in the cipd i'd look at what's going on with campaign i'd look at marketing week i'd look at all these different you know i look at the guardian you know now I just go to LinkedIn because it's all there. It's all let together it, yeah. in let one place. To you. Let it come to you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I do think it's an element of what you put in is what you get out. And that mm. goes back to, you know, if you have a great profile, if you are active on the system, then the algorithms will have a better idea of what to serve you in terms mm. of content. Um, so, you know, I'm very active on LinkedIn because I find it a very, you know, well, not very. I find it a, a, a incomparable tool when it comes to thinking about my my professional life. So when I get that, you know, featured section on on my homepage, it tells me today's news and views. It's relevant to me. Mm. You know, it really is bang on in terms of the types of stuff that I want to know about. And when I get my kind of news in brief, my one day summary, the content on there is 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 really quality. So I think LinkedIn has has identified that. Uh, this is the place where people want to come to grow their knowledge and be smart about what they do. And, and they've got the teams now in place to support that. And I think, you know, when I, like I say, five years ago, you might have had one person in the London office and she might have had one peer in, in, in another, you know, in, in Dublin or something like that. Mm. But, now, you know, there are large editorial teams run, you know, with incredibly, incredibly talented people. Yeah. Um, that's the thing about LinkedIn. They really hire the best. Now, I feel very lucky that I got in the door when I did, but I always felt very overwhelmed by the incredible people that worked, you know, alongside me, around me, cross-functionally. Mm. They have got really clever, really smart, really talented, creative people. Um, and so what you get as a result of that as a user is a, is a very, you know, really quality experience. Yeah, definitely. I think in, and I think there's been a there's a thing around that's what LinkedIn have been doing is been running in parallel with with the users as well, where you're getting more users who are who have grown up more with social media and are actually using a social media platform in this case linkedin in the way that is natural to them and that yeah. is you know there's, there's a great i'll drop it in the episode description but there's a there's a company called knowlton 
two brothers and um i'm sure some people have probably heard this um but they they do comedy sketches um i mean they're in the business of marketing you know but they tap into linkedin in particular and uh do have these kind of these characters that are um around the table and they're ones like uh you know uh, ones are um happy to connect or ones are a first time linkedin user you know i'm not sure what i'm doing here another one is a um um this is a professional network. You shouldn't be sharing that kind of content. Um, so I'll, I'll drop in a link, but it's very funny. But it's I think it's very, uh, very cool insight into into the kind of different types of people that are on. LinkedIn. Yeah, I think that's that's really topical Hilarious. actually, yeah. because I think people are playing around with different ways of using the platform mm. to share content. You know, and I, I'm I'd say in some ways I'm quite a traditionalist. You know, what I put on LinkedIn is um, what I share with my network and what I go to my to, to LinkedIn for is, you know, content and, and information that's going to help me in my professional life. I don't want to share what I'm doing with my kids on the weekend. And, mm. and you know, my, my language is, is perhaps, you know, you know I, I speak in the same way that I speak to my clients. Not that mm. it's really that different from how I speak to my friends. It, it's probably not. But I do, I have seen a, a rise of people who are perhaps using it like they might use Twitter or Facebook and it it jars with me a little bit but what I'd say if it's if it's authentic to them and that's how they you know present themselves that's that's what's interesting to them and that's what they want to see great go for it because exactly. I think you know it's all about being true to yourself and bringing your you know you know everyone's talking about it but bringing your authentic self to work and mm. if that's them then great it doesn't sit so well with me because that's not me, but then I don't yeah. have to follow that content. And I think that's the beauty of it. Exactly. You choose what you want to see. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And you know, we've, we've talked about, um, talked a lot about content, you know, LinkedIn being, being the biggest publisher of professional content, you know, on the planet. And, and for me, that's like in the recruitment space in the recruitment marketing, employer marketing space. Um, and I look at talent solutions and my experience has been, you know, a lot of companies really just, just going for the recruiter license to talk about the recruiter license and, you know, relying heavily on in mails. And when I go, for example, to the talent solutions page on LinkedIn, um, I don't see any mention of sponsored content where you can actually take posts you're putting on your company profile page and promote that to a very, very granular, specific tar target audience, um, which is, it's all about recruiter license, really. It's, that's really mainly what it's about. Um, so, but when we were talking about this, you said that was actually quite yeah. what, what you guys so were, were did when you, when you were there at LinkedIn. Because, so I spent a couple of years working in solutions, which is how yeah. I described at the beginning of our chat was, it was around, edu it was mostly an education role. So yeah. it was educating both internally and externally around the power of employer brand and how you do that in a, on a digital platform like LinkedIn. After a couple of years, I moved into sales um, and I, I missed that client facing role that I'd had for 11 years of my career previously mm. working in agency I wanted to own relationships again instead of kind of helicoptering in and and helicoptering out again mm. um and so I moved into sales and I can tell you as a salesperson you know within their relationship management team which is as they call it recruiter licenses is, is absolutely not the start of the story but it's mm. interesting that when we started talking ahead of this recording that you were saying that, you know, why is so LinkedIn dr driven by recruiter licenses? And, and, that, and you pointed me to the LinkedIn talent solutions webpage, which I haven't looked at for years and years, because I kind of don't really ever need to go there. And it is, you're right. It is, it, it's positioned. It looks to the market, like it drives, it leads with recruiter licenses, but that's almost like the bread and butter. You know, mm. that's, that's the bottom in a way of kind of the funnel when you're thinking as a, somebody that talks to clients at LinkedIn and still, you know, I don't, I don't really talk about it in a product sense. Number one, that's actually, you know, LinkedIn people don't tend to think about it in a product sense. It's more about like, what's the problem we're trying to fix yeah. and what tools have we got in our toolbox that can help you fix that. Um, but it's much more around, you know, how, and I should say, I should caveat that if you're a, I worked in, with large enterprise clients and the conversation may be different for a large enterprise client than you might have with an SMB client. You know, if yeah. you're a 
smaller mom and pop shop, then maybe you just need a recruiter license or recruiter light or whatever it's called. Um, but actually for larger clients, you know, we would absolutely be having a conversation around like, how do you want to engage your audience? How do you want to create awareness? Um, and, you know, how do we do that, which might be running, you know, branding on, on the platform, you know, which might be, like you said, sponsored content, it could be recruitment ads. And by by then creating, it's, you know, the classic marketing funnel, creating that awareness, um, converting it into interest, so you can actually pull the lever to hire people, which mm. you would do through things like jobs and recruiter licenses. But I think perhaps where people's brains might still get a bit stuck is that, LinkedIn became famous and built a billion dollar business with recruiter license as their first product. So it's what they went to market with initially. And the other products like the ads, like the company pages, like the ability to put your brand onto your employees profiles, like the sponsor content, all of that came later because we were still building the stuff. You know, mm. we had dreamed it back then. Still building so, the plane. Yeah, we, we were literally hadn't even built this stuff. So <laughs> recruiter licenses was the first thing that people bought because it's the first product that we went to mar market with from a talent solutions perspective. But I'd say that the conversation now that we would have with clients and how clients should think about the platform, it, it, it's got to be brand first. It's got to be awareness because if people don't buy into your employer brand, they're they may not want to apply for a job with you. And, you know, it's that whole thing about, you know, what do people think about you when you're not in the room and how do they mm. feel about your brand and what does that say? So it's interesting. Licenses still would make up, you know, I say a, a, a core layer of LinkedIn's revenue for yeah, sure. Yeah, but absolutely, definitely. as somebody going out there and talking to clients, that is not um, that is not the starting point. That would be the end point. Mm. It would definitely it's uh, you know it's it's the thing about not relying on on emails right at the beginning you know you actually you want to like any relationship you want to have some sort of familiarity with an organization ideally before you decide to purchase something off them you know you know about them and you have some yeah. sort of con connection with them so I think yes yeah, for sure the the approach of of you know, focusing more on company profile pages which I think is something that you know yeah that I think that's the box is ticked on ticked on that you see various you know varying qualities of how a company profile page is used but but that is definitely i think uh, an extensive part of what's uh, what i feel is kind of connected to a recruiter license you know people see that you know the value in that and that's i've often see that you know people organizations big organizations you know buying um what was it the kind of it was gold silver platinum packages which included recruiter license and recruiter license stuff, but also career page, you know, um, um, opportunities as well. But I think the, I think the thing around sponsor content is 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 a massive opportunity, um, and making sure that there is that kind of consistent flow of content that's going on to yeah. a company profile page, and also getting your employees actively in in involved in that. Um, then it does actually. In the same way that LinkedIn is is so focused on content, have those editorial teams actually organisations themselves being on LinkedIn start to take a bit more of an editorially um, driven approach. Um, I think this kind of naturally takes me on, on to the next question, which I'll, I'll kind of ask with with an answer if that makes sense. <laughs> um, is um, it just feels natural to do so right now? Is is that when I think about companies who are really focusing on creating kind of high quality um content on linkedin i think about an agency called the goat agency oh um, yeah you're telling me about them yeah, the goat as in stands for greatest of all time yeah and they're a social media um influence a social media marketing influencer agency um and they i think were ranked top eight um startups on linkedin um i think that was last year um and i actually had um yeah had harry who's um one of the co-founders of the goat agency on the episode a few weeks back or a couple of months ago now and um and they have a daily vlog and it's fantastic you know it's um i'll, you know, I'll drop in links to people who haven't seen it but they have someone who goes around um filming and talking to employees um and that kind of stuff is it's kind of getting a vibe for what it's like working there 
Yeah. You know, so what are you up to today? And, you know, before the lockdown, it was all about going around the office and talking to people. And then amongst that kind of, so what are you up to today? And getting that vibe of what it's like to work there and the kind of personalities of the people working there. They also then were dropping in opinion pieces and what we classify in air quote marks, I'm doing the fingers in my air quotes, is, is <laughs> thought leadership. But basically is, you know, opinion, opinion is what sells things, you know not the product really it's the, the product is just a byproduct of, of the opinion and so they very much go on that and so they've introduced you know that they, they also got amongst that content of kind of behind the scenes content they've got opinion content and expertise content you know this is what's happening on on tiktok at the moment um this is what um my view is on vines the new vine which is bytes and this is what's happening with that and i find it really really you know interesting but they've also got this this team that are dedicated to actually creating that content and actually harry with harry was saying that through the the daily vlog that they do and they've been adamant not to miss one at all even with the coronavirus hitting um and they've managed to pivot quite a bit on that by still doing the the vlog during the lockdown is um is yeah the vlog must go on and um and so they do it every day um and they've had in terms of sales you know, new business-wise, they've generated ridiculous amounts of of, of money in the millions of um, of generating new business from it, and that's pretty much all they do in terms yeah. of their talent attraction. So they invest kind of time and effort to do that, um, but it re- it pays for itself several fold in terms of new business, and it pays for them so- it's, itself in terms of attracting people into into the organisation um so I, yeah i'll drop a drop a few links into what the, the go agency are doing and they yeah. managed to blend have a nice blend between kind of entertaining content but also insightful content and that thing about really what is it like to work here and and they it is very natural they don't have any kind of typical employee profiles it's just it's a kind of documentary style which i think is is really nice so people are not surprised um when they apply to the goat agency about what they're like as uh, as an organization to work for yeah, I think it's that balance and it's that fusion of having really great creative content, fun content at high quality at a consistent level. Mm. I think mean, that's the, the nirvana, really. I think of all the three kind of pieces coming together, consistency, quality um, and creative. I think that's oh, I just made that up just now. I, I think I'm going to I'm going to write that down and keep that because it created <laughs> consistency and quality. Um, yeah, no. I think that's that is it's it's and it's very hard sometimes to do all of those things really really well. Um, sometimes you might have really you know you're pumping things out and and it's regular and but actually the engagement's low because it's not that high quality or it's just not engaging. It's not creative enough. It's not getting people's attention. So I think. I had a quick look as well when we were chatting before about the goat agency and um, yeah, they do really, really nice stuff at a high level. And I think that, you know, that's, that's LinkedIn as well. You know, it's why I've always been so passionate about LinkedIn as a product because what they do is consistently at very high standard. Um, And so, you know, I know that the experience that, that they provide and an experience on the platform and for the users is very high quality. And I think that's why goat has, that's why goat stand out. Mm. And what um what about what about you? You mentioned um there was an organisation in particular that you thought was a worth worth chatting about. Well, I'm just a bit mad about Unilever right now. Um, okay. and I know they're a big company. Um, and you know they have the budget and the, and the teams to deliver great content. But actually, mm. you know they are they are lean teams and they are very adept at pivoting and I you know I've had the wonderful fortune recently of working with them on a very large project they they do this thing every year called the future leaders league Mm. which is a global kind of I suppose business competition for young people graduates or, or you know soon to be recent graduates who compete in country teams of three to win fantastic prizes they you know yeah, they get, awesome. yeah and um so i've been very lucky that i've had exposure recently to to them and they do really really great work on 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 social and on linkedin in particular you know their their content that they put out has a global why i like it is i think it's got a global but local feel 
So they operate in, you know, hundreds of markets around the world. And I think no matter where you are in the world, you will feel that Unilever is talking to you, which I think mm. is a really hard task to achieve. Um, so they post in multiple languages. They post, you know, a full, diverse and inclusive range of content. Um, they have great mix of people, brand, events. Um, they are always consistent in their style, in their tone. They're very human, which I really like as well. Um, it hasn't got, you know, they're a big business. You know, I look around my house and I had to write a bio, a biography for them for something that I did with them last week. And one of the yeah. questions on the biography they asked me to complete was like, you know, what's your favorite Unilever product? And I was like, huh, interesting <laughs> question. Let me have a quick reminder of what their brands are. Pulled up their brands page and realized that half the stuff in my house was Unilever, including some <laughs> yeah. of my favorite products that I, you know, my, my hair conditioner that I use four times a week, which I couldn't live without, you know, is a Unilever product. So, you know, they're a big business, but they have managed to transcend into engaging in a very real and real way, which I absolutely love and is not easy, which means it's just, you know, very accessible at all levels, plus the people there are fab. So I really, really like what what they're doing um, on LinkedIn. And I think, you know, the, the fact that they've got over 10 million followers, um, I think is kind of all power to that. I think people like it. Yeah, they've got some yeah, nice variety of content there, a good amount of video as well. Um, and these look kind of like, you know, views into, you know, people's worlds in terms of kind of like, like this one good piece around mindfulness is here, which is really nice to see kind of meeting Alex. Um, that's had a good amount of engagement. So, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice example. Yeah, and they did their first LinkedIn Lives last week mm. in conjunction with the event. It's the first time they've ever done it. They had their CEO, Alan Job, do a live, which was really amazing to see. You know, just, you know, it's a very, you know, heavyweight CEO operating a large global business, speaking in very, very real terms, um, answering questions from the graduates on the pro, you know, in the competition that were putting to him. But they all just went out live, which, you know, is quite risky, I think um for uh, a, a business like theirs but they just said you know what let's just do it and let's just see mm. and it worked you know it was just it just meant that it was a very easy way to get an inside kind of look at the business and they so their ceo did it and their um chro lena did it as well and um i just thought you know bravo to them for trying new things which has risks attached in terms mm. of things could go wrong technology could let you down but it was seamless and I think that's part of it as well I think you have to be brave and I think you have to try new things and I think that um, companies that win on social and on, on places like Di like LinkedIn aren't afraid to just innovate and maybe sometimes it does go wrong and you learn from that and you move on and that was definitely true of what we were doing at LinkedIn you know sometimes we did things and we had to pull back you know mm. we we tried to launch a product um, around, um, oh gosh, uh, bringing people referral programs. So mm. we tried to launch, and, it, and it, it, it didn't work. It, you know, technologically, it didn't. It didn't talk to the, some of the other systems that our clients were using to to do employee referrals. So you scale back, you rethink, you start again. And I think that that's you've got to be brave. This world is a is a is a crazy changing place now more than ever. So I think you just have to try things. And if it's not perfect, but it's OK, go for it. Exactly. And it's, you know, I think one of the positives that have come out from, you know, the tough times of coronavirus and the pandemic is, is, is actually showing that, you know, content can be natural. <laughs> you know, you know it's, it's, it's if the BBC... I'm um, talking to um, Nick Francis, who's Casual Films, um, one of the co-founders of Casual Films. He said this to me. He's like, you know, um, when you see the BBC and other broadcasters of that level and quality doing video calls with each other, you know, and that's seen so much, then it, it does become more acceptable. And what is quality content? And, you know, is that thing about is actually what someone's saying um, that is is the most important thing. Of course, there is a role for, you know, high end production, you know, content, but it's great that Unilever did that because they understood it's got to be done. It feels really very natural to do that now. Um, and Joe, if it, if maybe 
the connection goes out well that's kind of life you know <laughs> it kind of yeah. that's, that's the way that's the way it works you know yeah, um, sometimes and, and you, your thing yeah absolutely about trying something and you know improving it's yeah um, it's no surprise at all you know that you you say that given, given you know given that you you know worked at, at linkedin and it's yeah it's um i think that thing about taking those kind of educated risks and you wouldn't know you wouldn't know if something didn't that referral thing didn't work unless you actually tried it and google you know google and facebook um often get criticized for well how many minutes they're closing something down but that was only around for like one or two years as well yes but, but they they know how it works in terms of innovating is this kind of minimum viable product approach um where you've got to put it out in the wild to see if it actually if it actually works so yeah absolutely it's um taking Chris, a iterative, know, iterative approach is important i don't know if you realize this but you said it just now about you know taking intelligent risks and Intelli taking intelligent risks was one of our six core values at linkedin as, as to how that was the framework we had around how we make decisions no. so you know take intelligent risks was, was one of the secrets to linkedin success you know not every risk works out but some do mm -hmm. and we had frameworks as to you know that we were that we were kind of that were developed by our senior team people like mike gamson actually taught us and i remember there was one year that we were actually given a framework to what intelligent risk are you taking this year and how mm. are you going to do that and we were kind of they were assessed and like we talked about them as teams and like is this is this a big enough risk and how do you measure what's a big enough risk and there was a whole um you know structure around how we did that so i think yeah it's interesting that you you, you touched on that and that was that it that was and remains one of linkedin's six core values other ones being things like relationships matter Mm. which is absolutely one of the things that I talk about still every single day. You know, we're in the business of building relationships and this includes in our workplace. Yeah, totally. um, and that's how the site was built. That's how relationships are built. And so often when I do kind of my LinkedIn masterclasses, it often comes back to profile and people think they've got great profiles, but maybe they do, maybe they don't. But mm. if you don't have that as a starting point, if you're going to be communicating from a personal brand point of view, then you're kind of failing at the first hurdle mm. because people be business with people and people connect with people. And if your profile doesn't reflect that, then, you know, it's all very well. You put out great content, but the first thing people are going to do is look at your profile. Mm. So, you know, that whole relationships matter piece is still so important. So yeah, I just thought it was interesting that you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, um, yeah I, I think it's, I, I think it's a lot more doable these days as well, where you, know, you can take those educated leaps because, because you'll be able to find out very quickly if something doesn't work and you, yeah. can, you can adjust. You know, I think there is this, I think this is maybe part of a lot of psychology, isn't it? Is that, is that, you know, wanting people want to make sure something is perfect. And maybe this comes from schooling, I think, because, you know, my kids don't mind trying things and don't know if it's going to work or not. But I, I think when they do more, they go to school more they'll maybe be a little bit afraid of, of getting something wrong because, mm. because the education system is based on, you know, getting things right and passing exams. I mean, that's, of course, that's a whole other discussion, isn't it? But I think this thing about about feeling that you, you can make those, you know, try something out new as opposed to making sure well, it's got to be perfect. Um, yeah. You know, so long as it, I think, is, is true to yourself and something you think, you know, your audience is going to going to find insightful and and valuable, you know, and helpful. Um, then, then fantastic. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's it's yeah, it'd be great to have you, you know, on on this episode. I think it's great to get a view view of you know what it is like, you know, being part of LinkedIn, you know, especially in the early days in the UK and um kind of talking about you know reed's approach and how that's kind of influenced the, the company and um i think for me it's a reason for having this conversation is because i think that you know linkedin is is such a such a massive opportunity for employer marketing more so beyond just the you know company profiles beyond just the recruiter licenses as you said you know in the team there was you know the approach was to go well you need to be able to build something first before you approach people with with um with emails or you know expect them to go to your your careers page so i think the role of content and actually planning out content from a from an employer marketing perspective 
although it is part of the employer branding, employer, you know, employer brand is part of the overall brand for sure. But I think um, definitely more more can be done there to making sure that actually, you know, when someone does get contacted by through an email, that actually they go, yeah, I know what these guys are about. You know, I, I can yeah. get on board with, 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 with what they're doing. I already have the rapport um, with that, that organization and I'm going to bother applying for them, which means better candidates coming through and ultimately um, more informed yeah, um, absolutely. hires I mean, they, when they start. LinkedIn um, commissioned a report a few years back um, which, you know, tried to put some data around it because obviously they're mm. a very, very data-driven business. And, and, mm. and I think two of the stats that I remember so clearly that came out of this report said that companies engaged on social media are 40% more likely to be perceived as competitive 40% more likely and 58% more likely to attract top talent. Mm. So, you know, it, it's it's in the data um, and there's tons of other reports out there, but this was just one that I remember that was done with an outside, you know, research firm. It was all around um, how genuine communication on social media helps businesses grow relationships with employees mm. and customers. So, you know, you're more likely to be perceived as competitive and you're more likely to attract top talent. So you have to be out there. You know, if you're if you're not a well-known brand, it's so much harder to engage with people. Are they actually the, the world as it is right now, you know, really terribly and unfortunately is probably going to change some of this in the mm. short to medium term, hopefully not the long term, because, you know, we have, uh, you know, unprecedented levels of unemployment right now. So, it's it's very much an, an employer's market because mm. there's a lot of people, fantastic people out there who are, are looking for opportunities. And so if we switch it up from employer marketing to employee marketing, you know, if I'm a candidate, candidate marketing, then I should be using sites like LinkedIn more than ever to market myself mm. uh, and make sure that I have a solid profile because it's, you know, how else are you going to stand out? There's going to be a lot of people going for very similar roles. So, you know, I'm doing more sessions around, you know, profile, et cetera, and content marketing for, for personal brand as well mm. as employer brand, mm. um, which I think is going to be the trend, unfortunately, for, for a little bit of, you know, for some time. Yeah, and it's kind of what should be done anyway, whatever happens, you know, okay. whatever, uh, you know, outside influences there are, it's, it's organisations having, you know, a – good profile and good presence on LinkedIn with very content that, you know, sits with their, their values and their messaging as opposed to just focusing on messaging um, and individuals to have something that they feel is a, you know, representation of themselves. I think um, kind of my stat that, this is a stat that kind of resonates with me that I've seen a few times, I think it's about 70% or 75%, um, but it's say 75% of, of people on LinkedIn regard themselves as passive job seekers. As you say, that might well change given what's going on at the moment. But, you know, if it is the case that LinkedIn is, you know, although people are tuned in to receiving job opportunities, you know, you've got to work harder yeah. if they see themselves as, as passive talent. So even that phrase feels a bit, I don't know, that it's got to be a better way of saying it. Um, so therefore, you know, your the content that you're putting out there um, has to, can't be, an active job seeking focused, you know, focused strategy. Yeah. Um, it's got to be about, you know, living your employer brand um, values, themes, pillars, whatever, you know, terminology you refer to use um, by creating content that isn't just the messaging of those values, but actually, you know, showing it through through the content you create. Um, yeah. yeah I, I'd, I'd love to make a quick closing plug. I, yeah, you know, I, I am mad about, LinkedIn and what they do and I think they've responded really well to what's happened in the last you know three four months in the world mm. of COVID with giving away free you know uh, jobs to to charities and, and mm. helping people and you know they, they've announced very recently that they're going to be bringing digital skills to 25 million people by giving them access to what data, you know, to data, which shows them what kind yeah. of things they might need to do to get themselves into different jobs. So people mm. can upskill by giving away access to certain courses on um, LinkedIn learning. Mm. So they've set up this website, which is opportunity.linkedin.com. 
And I just say, you know, if there is anyone looking at this who are finding themselves, you know, possibly out of work or looking to pivot, you know, check out what they're doing because they are really committed, you know, to the to the core mission, which has rung true since, you know, they founded um, about creating economic opportunity. And they they know that they're very well positioned to do that and they're responding mm. to that. So, you know, you asked me at the beginning, you know, why am I mad passionate about LinkedIn? You know, more than anything, it's them doing stuff like this and mm. continuing to try and live their 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 mission. Yeah, they've um they uh, they've been working in some countries in South America about using the LinkedIn learning platform and giving them to um give them to education organizations, you know, schools and um which is fantastic. That for me that is a great example of of living their living their um their mission you know it's yeah. um yeah it's, it's awesome yeah. great well thanks very much really appreciate you um you taking the time out i know you're busy um but um yeah the sun is shining today it's friday so hope yes. you enjoy enjoy your weekend when you get there and um yeah thanks very much again yeah no, thank you thanks for inviting me on it's been lovely reconnecting with you as well chris yeah good stuff thanks laura take care awesome Thanks for listening and don't forget to follow or subscribe for the latest episode drops. And don't forget to get in touch if you want to contribute.